Thank you for coming out this afternoon to yet another Maltese Falcon Big Read program. By the end of this month, you'll know everything there is to know about the shield hammock and the life of a private investigator. And certainly we'll learn a lot this afternoon because we have two writers here with us today, Mr. Joe Gores and Mr. Mark Coggins. And Joe Gores is uh, an expert on Dashiell Hammett. Mark Coggins has a detective series that ha uh, is set in San Francisco also. So, gentlemen, I'm going to let Mark uh, elaborate on the introductions, and I thank you very much for coming out today. Uh, Joe Gores is the author of the acclaimed DKA series of street-level crime detection, as well as Hammett, a novel fe featuring Dashiell Hammett as a private eye protagonist. He was educated at the University of Notre Dame in Stanford and spent 12 years as a San Francisco private investigator. The author of dozens of novels, screenplays, and television scripts, he has won three Edgar Allan Poe Awards and Japan's Maltese Falcon Award. He lives in Northern California. He's also working on a very, very special project that is germane to this conversation, and I hope that we'll get him to talk about a little bit about that later on. But to start out, uh, Joe, there's a raging debate going on on a, a news group or a mailing list called uh, Rare Avis, which of course is a reference to the Maltese Falcon, uh, about whether or not Sam Spade really loved Bridget O'Shaughnessy. What do you think about that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, he, I think he did. He, he was a guy who felt the woman. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about that. And, uh, um, he, as he says to Effie, I only know one way to relate to a woman. And he related to just about everybody that way. <laughs> she fascinates him the moment that she enters his office. And we only can infer this. It's not, it's not implied in the way Anna wrote the novel. Because uh, we never know what Sam Spade thinks. We only know what he does. And... Uh, how he reacts to things that we see. He, uh, uh, he feels deeply for her. He doesn't trust her. He knows that, um, I don't know if she is the original from Fatal or not, but she sure is the best one I've ever seen because she is 100% immoral and uh, is only interested in her own affairs, her own feelings, her own satisfactions, her own pleasures, her own wealth. Yet, I think that she feels also for Spade. So there is a real spark going on there between the two of them. But I guess I do think that in his way, he loved her. <laughs> okay. um, well, another question about her. Their relationship uh, at, at, at the sort of uh, final scene where he accuses her of having killed Miles, uh, he points out that Miles had uh, his gun on his hip underneath his overcoat, and he knew that Miles wouldn't be that dumb to do that. So that's sort of his tip off that something was was wrong uh, in the whole setup. Do you think that he knows that from the beginning then that? I think it's something he comes to acknowledge later. I think that at the very beginning, the very fact that you say this, Hammett used that scene once before in a short story called We Will Kill Bob Teal, where he's killed behind the, this, this uh, uh, continental op, is, is killed behind a, a, a billboard. And a billboard figures in Archer's death, too, because he rolls down the hill and then he's up behind a billboard. Um, but in Who Killed Bob Peel, both the op and the old man who runs the Continental Detective Agency understands that, that the person that the detective is investigating would never be caught that way by the person he's after. But he could be caught that way by the client. Because after all, the client trusts payments, so you're going to trust the client, the client's going to say, Hey, could I got to talk to you? He would go up the alley and or behind the billboard. Uh, but there is still a question whether, because three or four or five times in the novel, Hammett says uh, that Ar 
Archer was as dumb as any man ought to be, which means that that Archer could have been that dumb. And uh, we get a little clue to Archer's um, not getting it. When he first sees Bridget, and he licks his lips, it looks at her, and Spade goes like this on the arm of the chair, no, knock that stuff off. You know, this is a client. But, but Archer is is a guy who um, acts first and thinks later, I think. So I think he did have a question at the beginning, and he was hoping against hope, as his feelings for her deepened, that she was not the one who killed Archer, because he knew he couldn't let it go by. He, he would have to do something about it, about Archer's death. A, a, a thing that, oh, maybe I'm not out of, out of your range of questions here, but the novel is called The Maltese Falcon. The novel is not about the Maltese Falcon. The novel is about who killed Miles Archer. That's what the whole thing is about. The rest of it, wonderful as it is, is a byplay over here in the corner that is going to uh, uh, intrigue everybody. And of course, that's what we all like to think the novel's about, but that really isn't what it's about. And I have a question. I'm sure many of you will get this, but between the novel and the movie version, there's a difference in the ending. And uh, I always like to ask people, What's the last line of the movie? The last line of dialogue in the movie. This woman should know. <laughs> That's what everybody thinks. The last line of dialogue is, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's Tom Fullhouse. Spade says the things that dreams are made of, and Fullhouse says, huh? <laughs> and then the, the, the the elevator door shuts and we see the bars on Bridget's face as the elevator goes down. That's when we move. <laughs> you had mentioned, uh, speaking of uh, the fact that we never know what's uh, going on in the space that uh, we're sort of distanced from him. What's, what, in your opinion, are really his motivations? Is it personal loyalty to his partner? Does he have some code about professional integrity? Or is he out to make a quick buck? No, he is not. Uh, out to make, uh, he's always out to make a quick buck. I've never known a detective who wasn't out to make a quick buck. But um, he, um, Hammett talking about Spade in the introduction to the, um, one of the editions. Uh, the the uh, yeah, I little paper, uh, hard cover, small, yeah. Um, he says that, that Spade, is the ideal private detective. He is what all private detectives wish they were, and in their happier moments, think they are. And a few times in my life, during my professional years as a private eye, I thought, yeah, yeah, I did. And uh, there's a guy named David Petschheimer. He is the best private investigator I've ever, ever, ever had. And, uh, he says that too. He says, Spade is it. That's who private detectives should be. The other end of the scale is the continental op. He is also who private detectives should be if they work for a large organization. There's a, a, a story called um, The Scorched Face about the, about the op. And in there, there's a, a brilliant little half a page where uh, he and the other operatives and the police are trying to find out some facts. How many women have died by suicide in a certain period of time? In those number of women, how many knew each other? Now this is the kind of puzzle you do get as a private detective. And um, in this brilliant little half page, he just talks about what they did. And what they did is dig and dig and dig and dig. They, you never give up. And then he finally says, the last sentence of that little section is, we got something. And that's, that's what private eyes are all about. And Spade is certainly the man for, he's going to